General David Sejisad. Your Excellency Resistance Officer Number 00031, General David Sejisa, was born on the 13th November of 1954 to late Canon Simon P. Wajojo and Mrs. Tabisa Bujangara Wajojo of Kaibona, Nyambirizi, Maogla, Sembabule District. He attended law school and was awarded a bachelor's degree of laws a Master of Laws degree from Macquarie University and did a postgraduate bar course, which he left after clerkship. He also pursued a certificate in information and computer technology of Berkshire Corporation Canada. General David Sejisa was enlisted into the Army on 10 February 1980, commissioned on 30th December 1980, and has served through ranks to full general. He has undergone several military training courses that include, but not limited, to the following. Officer Cadet Police, 1979A10 Tanzania, Senior Command and Strategic Studies course, Command and Staff course. Over the years, General David Sejusa has held several command and staff appointments, including the following. Senior command appointments in the National Resistance Army, Commander 5 Division, Chief of Combat Operations, Constituency Assembly Delegate, Member of National Resistance Council, Member of Parliament representing the UPDF, Senior Presidential Advisor on Defense and Security, Minister of State for Defense, and Coordinator Intelligence Services. General David Sejisa has achieved a number of decorations that include Damu Medal, Luel Triangle Medal, Senior Command and Staff College Best Student Award, Recognition Certificate for Best Command and Service Paper, at Senior Commander Staff College Chimaka. General David Sejisa is a family man, happily married to Juliet, and are blessed with children. Your Excellency, I now present General David Sejisa for receipt of the Certificate of Service, Certificate of Recognition, and a souvenir. The President and the Commander-in-Chief of UPDF, the Ministers present here, Chief of Defense Forces, the Army leaders present here, the General Officers who are retiring or retired, all the invited guests, leaders of UPDF of different capacities, rather levels, ladies and gentlemen, spouses too. This is a special day which the Lord has chosen. We thank the Lord for this day. My children and 
grandchildren now. There is a nursery rhyme, I think, they sing, which goes like, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in him. This is the day the Lord has made. Mr. President, sir, and comrades, as you know, it wouldn't be me standing here to present this badge of officers. It would be our departed comrade, General Ed Tumini, who left this world. By our hierarchy of the high command, he, became, he came before me and General Salim Salim. But like I wrote earlier in, my mem in his memory, when I quoted Prophet Isaiah, who wrote, My plans aren't your plans, nor are your ways my ways. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. But General Eric Tumine lives on through his revolutionary works and achievements at a personal level in our country and beyond in the region. We salute you. May the Almighty God receive him and keep his family safe. Your Excellency, I stand here in the name of these generals who are retired. And I wish to pay tribute to you personally. Today I intend to speak as an armed officer and a member of the high command and a member of the family of UPDF, not as a politician, so we <laughs> I stand here, Your Excellency, and the Commander-in-Chief to pay tribute to you personally as our war leader and the command of UPDF, in which we have all served in various capacities for several decades, 40, 50 years, and so on. We thank you. We thank the Army leadership. We thank the people of Israel. May the Lord. <laughs> As is normally the case, many may wonder the general said you who has had runnings in with the system and so on. How does he now represent this guy as officer? The answer is simple. It's because he belongs to the family. And the family never breaks, no matter the disagreements. There are four types of family which I may, may be summarized. The human family, the one of Adam and Eve and us, and the African family and the Uganda family, and then the biological family under which all of us fall. The UPDF NRA family falls under the Uganda family. The essence of family <coughs> as a unit <coughs> is for the survival of a species or that subject or object. And for that family to survive, it must have the capacity to manage and withstand the disagreements and contradictions within, no matter how, much, how fundamental they may be or may appear to be. Hence, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and partook of the fruit, as you remember, which was quite a fundamental breach, they remained members of God's family and the human race. He did not banish them to create another Adam and another Eve, or change them into gods, or snakes, or buffalo.
Therefore, the capacity of a family to manage these contradictions points or shows which family have the resilience to survive, grow, and develop or perish. My presence here therefore shows that NRA UPDF leadership had the ideological depth and patriotic presence to manage these contradictions in this country and then lay foundation for the management of the African fair affairs. And I thank you, Mr. President. And just like the biological family, which is founded on blood, blood brotherhood, the revolutionary brotherhood, which defines the NRA UPDF family, is steeped deep in the shedding of blood for fellow man and woman. That we offered ourselves to die for our country, binding us together forever. That's the reason I'm here and representing you. Freedom fighting is not a simple, smooth enterprise. Where the lion may lie with the lamb, as the Bible says, it's a terrain that can be bumpy, sunny, deadly, meandering, and dangerous. That's why leaders who take on the role of fighting for freedom of the African people need ideological grounding to navigate this difficult terrain. Mr. President, I thank you for the years we have been in this world and the nation building to see the stripes which have been made. <laughs> the African survival will depend on the leadership who acquire capacity to manage the difficult bottlenecks and contradictions facing our continent, Mr. President, build our countries and the region. I'm proud to belong to another AUPDF, which has made incredible strides in this effort, though a lot remains to be done. At this juncture, I want to talk about the people. Your Excellency, dear generals, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of all of us, the video officers here, the generals, and those officers and who retired yesterday, the combatants of UPDF NRA, to thank the people of Uganda, the people of Uruguero, Blemezi, Nakasongola, Singo, Toro, Punyoro, Kasese, Ankori, Kampala. Even the greater North, Your Excellency, for the sacrifices, the bloodshed, the properties lost, the homelessness, the families in the in the service of the motherland. Each region has had a fair share of turmoil, of contribution to what Uganda is today. We thank you. Uganda has passed through so much. So much blood has been spilled, and we have lost so much. May the Lord heal and reward all of you. We all know there was a phase in our struggle when the civilian population were the vanguard, when they were our, they are our eyes, our ears, they were our protectors, they fed us. This phase which we called the strategic defense or concealment phase, took a bigger part of 1981. These civilians settled us. They put us in their houses, in their forests. They gathered intelligence. They carried out reconnaissance missions for us to acquire small arms and so on. If we did not have the population on our side, then there would be no NRA, UPDF, and certainly no NRA. Let us therefore thank 
our people who paid the ultimate price, like Ruta Maguzi and those who sheltered us and became our guides through the Ruero jungle. Mr. President, allow me when I, they told me late yesterday that I'll be speaking. So this morning I was jotting out and I tried to remember some of our people who helped us, civilian contacts and so on. I couldn't remember all of them. But Mr. President, allow me to remember some of them. There are many. In Singo, we had Muzei Karuna, Muzei Chisitu, Haji Twakiri of Kabura Muriro, Bomboka, Chamuhangire, Kajizi, I think Kajizi here. Kajizi was a civilian. Abdu, Bakiti, Rugonvu, Raymondo, Peter Kerim's brothers, in Kokonjeru, in Buremezi, we had Karori, Wamara, Sempa, <coughs> Mama Nansa, and his son, Sam Chafua, Chofa, Imakurubita, Ruri Kakatende, Senkai, Kadu, Kapai, and his sons, he had two sons, Mama Richard, in Umanga areas, Kaye, Mutwaribu, Kauma, Chivirige, Katerega, in Wunyoro, Guamkaga, Chamanwa, and so on. We thank all of you all and pray that the Almighty God blesses them and sustain their family. We thank you. <laughs> now, Mr. President, I want to take this opportunity to thank the leadership of Venera AUPD. Your Excellency leaders served to provide the purpose for the struggle, the direction, and the motivation for the troops. But in war, like we had in Wales, they make very critical conditions in a fog of war, what others have called high pressure situations with very consequential risks. Another A was a unique war. Mr. President, the only of its kind on African continent, and perhaps even elsewhere. This is not known to very many people. This was a war where we had no border with any foreign country, where we could get assistance, arms, and supplies. Our headquarters were just 26 kilometers from Kampala at Mugadi. Mugadi is just 26 kilometers. How was this achieved? It was through leadership. Even the support of the population cannot be taken for granted. If the leadership is not equal to the task, to harness it and handle it correctly, they will disintegrate and the war will fail. <coughs> I wish to thank the leadership who have since held this country together. It's not easy for, Afri for African countries to remain peaceful for 40 years. It's not easy. So it should not be lost to anyone, despite our disagreements. As times change and political differences crop up, we get many revisions. History must never be altered or rewritten. And absolutely, I'm no revisionist myself. The National Resistance Army Leadership, the Chairman of the High Command, UM7, who led that war, and the commanders who served under him, achieved the un unimaginable. It was not easily even imaginable. We mastered what is usually even not taught in many military academies, military colleges, that an army was totally allied with the population and the forces imbued with patriotism, discipline, commitment to face and endure great pain. No enemy, however strong, can defeat that. And that's why we couldn't be the people. Therefore, on behalf of these generals assembled here, 
I take this opportunity to thank you, Comrade UAKM7, the Chairman of the High Command NRA, and the Head of the Resistance War, for executing that war successfully. I congratulate you, Ndubi Generals, and those who are not here, who have since departed. All the officers and combatants of NRA and UPDF, all the political leaders of this organization, and the people of Uganda for the great sacrifices and the services to our nation. Thanks to the family. Your Excellency, when I was at Chimaka Senior Command and Staff College, I wrote a short paper titled How a Soldier's Family Impacts a Soldier's Combat Readiness. Simply put, good soldiering starts at home. Our families, spouses, our children just know you are our uncle. You are the foundation of our success and of course even failures sometimes. <laughs> you, you provide social, psychological and emotional support as well as physical support. A healthy and happy family creates a more ready soldier who can focus on the mission. And many times you do all that even when you are not well provided for in areas of welfare and so forth. Just to know our dear wives and our children. We have achieved all this together. Our victories are your victories. Thank you so much for loving us and making this work. Those still serving the UPDF. The mission to liberate Africa has never been greater and more urgent. So much has been achieved and a lot is yet to be achieved. We have, like is the case everywhere, new challenges. Some are existential. I pray that the leadership, God gives it wisdom to navigate these hardships. Therefore, continue training, take, take, Use the opportunities being provided. Make sure that you deepen your ideological horizons. But above all, love your nation and honor the people of Uganda, always. They are special people. Conclusion, Mr. President, sir. Your Excellency and dear comrades, there is no greater honor than to serve the people. Those who choose to die in service of fellow men and women, to sacrifice for the higher goals and ideals, and in effect the service of God, for God is his people, I salute you. I thank God for this day, for enabling us to travel this road together, for the victories and achievements we have registered, and for the moments we have shared in happiness and in grief. It has not always been laughter, like when we have lost so many in battles. We have shared a lot, but we have served Uganda, and I'm sure Uganda will prosper. Thank you, and may God protect everyone, for God and my country.